29th a couple years ago. Hit hard to center field. Martin going back, still going back to the wall. Tie game. <laughs> Ball stuck. It's stuck, stuck in, in the, the wall. <laughs> and they'll place Dozier at second base. He came inches away from hitting his first home run this year at Target Field. <laughs> Talk about an oddity. It wedged into the panels of the pad in center field. You don't see that too often. You know, could have just hit another inch and bounced over the pad, but instead it stuck in the pad. Tigers are looking at it. The Twins are looking at it. And I don't know. I thought the ball stuck in the grass beyond the wall. <laughs> So it is a <laughs> double for Dozier. Well, the pads out there, of course, they have that divider right there. So Turner at first, lefty looking right at him. And Soto with a high fly ball, deep left center. And Ciarte checking his surroundings. And the ball is out of his glove, into the glove of Duval for the out. And Turner has to scream back to first to avoid the double play. If they hit the wall, this is going to be weird, and I don't know what they're going to do. If that short hopped into Ciarte's glove, then we got a problem here, and I don't know where he put the runners. All right, so we're getting word from the official score. I saw the umpire, Manny Gonzalez, kind of take his fingers and point them east-west. Uh huh. What they're saying is that Soto is going to be credited with a single, but he passed Turner on the base pass, and he's going to be called out as a result. And so Turner is back at first base because Soto passed him on the base pass. So it wasn't a catch. Right. There he's passed him. It was going to take a lot of offense to make up for the pitching. Muncie with a high fly ball to center. Almora's back. Out of room. There it goes. Muncie to center field. And the Dodgers on the board once again with the long ball. This is 16th of the year. Wow, he's actually trying to take Cubs down with it with a deflection. They too have hit 119. This called a bella high and deep to left up near the catwalk. And that hit the catwalk. That will be a home run. That ball hit that catwalk, it, but it hit the center catwalk, and that ball is in play. If it hits the lower two. It's a home run. It hit the third one. And now they're having a discussion about that. And this is always a point of contention here at Tropicana Field. Now John Gibbons is out of the Blue Jays dugout. And they're going to talk about this. Yeah. It hit. There, there are four rings here, basically. The lower ring is one, two, three. It hit the third ring up. That high ring where you see the lights. On that, on the left side of your screen, that's the catwalk that it hit. It's in play if it comes down in fair, in fair territory, and it's all you can get. You can see Butler has no idea where it is, and then recognizes that the ball is to his right and actually bounced off the wall and bounced away from him. Now that ball is in play, and Colabello not taking anything for granted. Granted, hustles all the way to third base, and they indicate that the call on the field will stand as Colabello ends up with. A triple. And a high fly ball down the left field line. That ball hits the speaker and comes down and it's caught by Echevarria. Ball in the speaker. That was connected to the B ring. And Echevarria stayed with it and made the catch. Boy, how big of a play is that? Because we've seen stuff you know hit the catwalk come back into play bounce around for extra base hits and uh, uh, Danny Echevarria you see the baseball right there in front of the speaker whack and comes off of it and Echevarria never loses sight of it puts it away wow
And Bruce lifts one to left pretty well hit Ortega though should have room I think near the wall and he made the catch oh. or did it hit off the fence first I think they're saying it's a grand slam the third base umpire Dan Bellino said that he played the carom off the back fence and it's a grand slam for Jay Bruce nice deke by Ortega who had that ball land in his mitt somehow. But Bruce gets credit for his seventh home run. Let's watch. And a good call by Bellino. It went off the M&M sign over the orange line. It is indeed a grand slam. And the Mets now have an 11 to nothing lead. Ortega was shocked to find that ball in his glove. Tried to sell it as best he could. The umpires are going to have to go and uh, check it out. I think now they're they just going to let the call stand. I think uh, I think they know that it's a grand slam and I think Don Mattingly knows it's a grand slam. And the one guy that doesn't know is the guy on the phone. He needs to go back inside. And you can see it. You can hear it. It went off the blue sign. It is a grand slam. The second of the season for Bruce and the seventh of his major league career. And it's it lifted into left going to be caught about by Jay how about that you talk about lifting that's uh, right out of a, a cricket match this ball bounces <laughs> he hit it <laughs> off the bounce I thought it might have bounced and they just showed us a side replay and that bounced in front of home plate how in the world well that's the first out you see a little bit of everything Grounded to first. Moreland goes to second one. I don't know what Holiday was doing. Ellsbury is safe at first. Holiday's going to second, but he's out on the force. I guess Holiday thought that he was in a rundown, but Moreland did not step on first. He threw to second, so he's out on the force. Well, he's definitely out, but how do you rule this? I mean, you can't assume a double play, I guess. Well, I mean, I think he interfered with the first base yeah, making the catch. He did. I mean, he's running back to first, and he's a he's a, a, a runner that doesn't exist anymore. He'd been erased. This is going to be an interesting conversation. Yeah. Yeah. It's a... Unless the. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Uh, get he was out at second. There's no reason for him to be running back to first. Well, he's thinking that Moreland stepped on the bag, so he's going to try to get in a rundown or get back to the base. But obviously, he's out right there. Now he's in the way of Moreland trying to make the play. It hits Ellsbury. No, Farrell's got a beef. I, I believe that Moreland makes that that play if he doesn't have two runners right there. One that didn't belong there. Let's see what they have. They're going to talk to John Farrell because they're not making any deliberate motion with a call. I would think if they were going to call it a double yep. play, they would have taken yep. the headset off and pumped their fists. Yep. I think he said I'm protesting. protesting. I really believe the Yankees catch a break here. I think it was obvious interference by Holiday. Caleb Joseph before the game got involved in some of this. He signed a fake autograph, congratulated the fans, did his Cal Ripken impersonation, <laughs> and, and kept going all the way out to center field. <laughs> there you go. Despite the seriousness, obviously, of why this game's being played as it is in an empty ballpark, there has been some smiles here with some of the players. They come off, first baseman in particular, inside. Throwing the ball into the stands as they normally would the fans. Adam Jones came out and bowed to the people out in the bullpen area. And Beltre backing out apparently thought that he had had called time that uh, Bill Miller had given it to him. And Miller never came out from behind home plate. He stuck right there and Michael threw a breaking ball for a called third strike. And Beltre and, uh, and Bill Miller going at it pretty good. Ron Washington there. Just to make sure it doesn't get uh, too heated. Adrian said I raised my hand and called timeout. If you call it late. The umpire does not have to give you timeout. 
That's the other side of it. And I'm sure that's what Bill Miller is saying. Yeah, he can't call a timeout himself anyway. He has to be granted a timeout, like yep. I'm saying, Tom. Umpire has to say, okay. Yeah, he, he called it late, and the umpire did not give yep. him timeout. One and one, lost his bat up into the extended netting, <laughs> and it gets lodged there. How are we going to get that down, <laughs> CJ? I know I can tell you this. I'm not climbing up there to get it, and that bat is probably going to stay there for a while. <laughs> I don't think we're going to have a game delay. I don't know if they make a ladder that big. And that is amazing, and this was all because of the really good changeup that Scott, Skaz, excuse me, Kazmir threw. Fortunately, that netting comes out just far enough to catch that thing. It's an impressive toss. Well, we play on with that bat stuck up there. And that is new netting this season installed at all Major League Baseball parks to go from the backstop to the home plate side of the dugouts. 2 2 delivery on the way down to third. That's going to be a fair ball. It'll roll into foul territory and into the corner on to second base. Ball still rolling around, thinking about three. They got a chance all the way through, and he is out. A perfect one hop throw. As Trey Mancini had to chase it down, tried to get three, and ran out of his shoe in the process. <laughs> had a flat tire, that's why he got thrown out. But take a look at the shoe, there it goes. It loses a little bit of traction. Nice tag by Peterson. His shoe is actually coming off at this point. And there it goes. So that, that certainly hampered his uh, running ability. To get the third base. As you mentioned, Mancini bobbled the ball in left field, and that's when he decided to go to third. Blew out a tire. Left handers delivery, inside out swing, right field down the line, not particularly deep, foul territory. Oh, lost it. Had it lined up, Steve Pierce starting at first base, and then it disappeared on him. I don't Almost know. Almost hit him. If it disappeared or somebody in the stands might have called it. Because he just stopped. He looked like he was all over it, had a pretty good bead right there, and then he just pulls back and lets it drop. And watch him look into the stands like, <laughs> oh, wow. man. <laughs> Wait, you were supposed to. Oh, it was you. <laughs> oh, oh, my, my gosh. Good. I may have said last year's draft, 2011. A little soft liner, oh. and the bat goes flying right at Sogard and knocks him down after he makes the catch. I have never seen this before where the bat winds up hitting the guy that takes the ball. That's incredible. Good job by Sogard to focus on the baseball and make the play. Yeah, that you see a lot of broken bats. You see him flying into the stands, but not too often do you see a guy out in the field get hit by it. Clipped him, sent him down. Now up until seeing Sogard make this play, Marty Feldman, the only guy I ever thought would make the play. Now Jake Arietta has got a pitch to Bryce Harper. Four pitch walk. Harper walked for the eighth time by the Cubs. Bryce Harper, free pass again. I mean, Cubs fans get a chance to see Bryce Harper play once a year, and they're probably thinking, well, wow, he's a really good walker. With the steal or a wild pitch here. There you go. Oh my goodness, another one gets away. And here comes here comes the runner, Ben Revere to third, and he comes home. But if the ball hit Bryce, it's a dead ball. Alert baseball by Ben Revere. They're gonna send him back all the way to second base. That was exciting. the most exciting <laughs> non-play of the season, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Stop the presses. Bryce Harper has walked again. Wow. Bryce Harper is about to be walked for the 12th time in a four game series. Bryce Harper's on base percentage is going to be 500 before we know it. They're going to walk him again to load the bases and push the lead run to third. So now, six walks today to Harper and 13 in the series. He just said, This is awesome. He can remember this game the rest of his life. He will. This may never happen again. The weekend the Cubs were scared to death to pitch to Bryce Harper, but they parlayed it into a series win and they're trying to make it a sweep. Joe Madden totally taking Bryce Harper out of this game. 
Fans behind home plate begging Bryce to swing at one of these. Popped high in the air. Playable. Hosmer still coming as Hosmer. It's over his head. Astros no win. Way. Hosmer kept looking for help. And by the time the ball dropped, the Astros won. On a 20 foot pop up that lands in their territory. I don't even know what to say. I cannot believe that that just happened. Help or no help, that play's got to be made. High pop up, 78 degree launch angle on that one. And that's just a full head of steam from Eric Hosmer overrunning that. He's looking for help, but the catcher, A.J. Ellis, was nowhere to be found. He never left his spot behind home plate. He stood there in anticipation of Eric Hosmer making that play. Ellis' first reaction was to point to Hosmer, and Fisher was easily across second. 